What is going on guys? It's Real Touch Gmail here back with another game maker tutorial for you guys. And today is going to be the first part in a new set of videos on programming in Game Maker Studio. So this is going to be um, leaned more towards the beginner side of my viewers. Although if you are advanced or intermediate, I'm sure you can still learn a couple things from this uh, series here. So let's go ahead and begin right into it. So today what we're going to be doing is looking at, you know, just the very basics of uh, basics. Uh, we're going to be looking at, you know, how Game Maker Studio actually runs its software. So, you know, how it manages an X and Y positioning system, you know, how uh, code is compiled, you know, how understanding that a game is just a loop. That's all it really is. Uh, and then we're going to be looking into, you know, if statements, for loops, and while loops. That's that's kind of the goal for this video today. And then uh, next next uh, tutorial, we'll go ahead and look into uh, converting drag and drop actions to code, which will be pretty cool. So we can basically take any of these drag and drop actions here and put them into code without actually having to drag and drop them. All right, which is much better for it's a lot. It makes the file size a lot smaller. And I think it's easier to manage uh, an object and a game using code and not drag and drop. All right, so let's go ahead and begin. So first off, let me explain to you what a game is. And a game is basically a loop. That's all it is. If we go into my Java tutorials, I talk about, and we actually create a loop within our game here. But Game Maker has already done that for us. Uh, if we go ahead and have a room here, and we run the game, Right off the bat, you can see in the compiler uh, debug screen, it's writing chunks, it's doing all this type of stuff. And as you can see, um, let's see if it says it here, entering main loop. That's the last compile, um, well, besides for this stuff, this that's the last message it gives us. So basically, in this game right now, we are running through a loop. And how fast are we running through that loop is called your FPS or your room speed, which right now, currently, default is at 30 let's see if I changed it yes I did so if you go ahead and go into your room here and you go to settings you'll see that your speed is automatically by default 30 and personally I don't like that that's a little small for me it makes it a little bit laggy uh, I put mine to 60 which is in other words 60 FPS okay so you know, 30, 30 is 30 FPS, 60 is 60 FPS. So it's basically that game loop is running through 60 times per second. Okay, now that gets into things like our object test. Like if we add a step event, now this step event will be ran at your room speed. Okay, so that's basically like a tick method if you are converting from Java or an update method. So let's go ahead and go to the create event though. And we'll put in some code here. And what we're going to want to do is first off, let me explain how code is compiled, right? So when we're at, when we actually do hit this play button at the end of the day, you can see it's writing all these chunks, it's per, it's doing a ton of stuff. And this is all it compiling and condensing your code into a language that your computer can understand which is binary now you know the computer doesn't understand us writing actual English inside of the code editor here but it does if we do like an if statement or something it does take that if statement and convert it into a combination of one and zeros which the computer can understand all right so yeah so when it does compile it's compiling from top to bottom and that's very crucial to understand because if you don't understand that code compiles from top to bottom well there are some exceptions there if we're calling different methods and running different scripts you can make the you can make the code uh, go back up and compile from there and then come back down um, but for the basics here code is compiling from top to bottom so if we wrote high and say it didn't give us an error here Let's just do that. If we wrote high, and then we wrote hey on line three, when we compiled this game, 
it would first read hi and then it would read hey so an easy way to do that is since we're in the create event we could do a quick function that game maker allows show message which takes the parameters of a string hey and then we can show another message hi all right and if we go ahead and save that and so now basically what's going to happen is if we run this game it's going to say hi hey and then hi so let's go ahead and run it make sure your object is in the room as you can see we're getting a message that says hey and then we're getting a message that says hi and then we're done okay So now that we know how code is compiled and how it works and how it runs, now we can do cool stuff like uh, if statements. All right. And so these are functions that most programming languages have, um, which we're going to be learning the if statement, the for loop, and the while loop. Okay. And all of these are different and uh, in their own little ways, right? So. First off, an if statement, you're going to be using this if statement when you're programming a ton. This is crucial. So if we if we look into creating a variable, and a variable is basically just something that can be changed and something that we control. So if you wanted, say, like, for example, the name of your character, and you name him Bob, now you don't need to, in your code later on, keep saying, you know, if you wanted, like, a show message, hey, uh, Bob, or something like that. Now you could just say, you know, hey, and then plus your variable name, which is uh, Bob. So in case that didn't make sense, if we just do show message, hey, and then we can say plus name, and we run it. It says, hey, Bob because we stored this string Bob into the variable name. That's the same thing with numbers. So you could put, you know, your, um, your, you know, your jump height, underscore height, that equals 15. And now instead of saying, you know, uh, later on, you know, when you press the space bar, uh, take your velocity speed and to negative 15, you could just say negative jump height. So then this really helps when, if you have that 15 stored all over your code you don't need to go back and change it everywhere you want you can just go ahead and go to the main source of jump height and change this to 10 or whatever you want all right so if we go ahead and create some sort of variable and let's I'm just gonna say Z and we're gonna equal this to 10 we can create an if statement so we can say if Z is less than five then you're gonna and we use curly braces here or brackets to show okay if our z variable is less than five which it isn't then do all whatever is in between these curly brackets here now these are not parentheses these are curly brackets um then so if z is less than five then everything in in this section here before the curly bracy ends will be um, will be done so if Z is less than five we could say show message apples all right so if we run the game now we should get nothing So we get nothing. We get no message or anything because this code was not compiled. It saw, hey, so the computer said, hey, Z is not less than five. So we're going to skip over everything within these code, within this curly brace here. So just to prove that, we can go ahead and do show another message. End. And if we run it, as you can see, we get end. So it literally just skipped over this. But now if we set Z to equal four, what will happen? Because now Z is less than five. 
now we get the message apples and we get the message end afterwards so pretty cool um, that also gets into if else statements which is basically pretty self-explanatory if you think about it all we have to do is say else and put into these curly braces and then we can show message not apples or something I don't know so basically what this is doing here is we're saying if Z is less than 5 you're gonna show this message or else if it's not less than 5 then we're gonna show this message it's not it's never gonna do both it's either gonna do one or the other so if we set Z to equal 4 and let's get rid of this end here It shows apples and that's it but if we set Z to equal 5 and we run it as you can see it says not apples and why because Z 5 is not less than 5 5 is equal to 5 and you can do the same thing with greater and all of that stuff greater than equal to that's all pretty self-explanatory now hopefully that makes sense to you if, if not I'll go back to it on the next tutorial but uh, this should make sense this is pretty easy so far so now let's go ahead and make a for loop you know let's make a while loop first while loop is a little bit easier uh, not that for loop is difficult but it should make you understand a for loop a little bit better so if we go ahead and say while this is basically the same thing as a if statement, except if we say while z is less than 10, or 5 we'll say, just to make it the same, and we put in 10 here, we are just going to basically, we can, let's do debug underscore uh, what is it show underscore debug message there we go Z or we'll just say apples again so show underscore de debug underscore message is instead of showing a message in the actual game here it's just going to show a message in our compile uh, code down here and the reason is because a while loop is basically saying if Z is less than five we're going to show this but it's creating a loop so it's constant it, it's once it's done with all of the code inside here it's going to go back up and do it again and go back up and do it again and, and again and again and again and again and again until Z is no longer less than 5 so if we create Z at 4 and we run the game As you can see down here, we are getting apples being written over and over and over and over again. So now if we go ahead and do something along the lines of this. If Z is less than 10 and our Z is equal to 1, but down below, we every time it runs through the loop, we say Z plus equals 1. You could do plus plus equal in code is basically the same as saying z equals z plus one it's literally the same thing so we're just adding one to that rz variable you could do that or if you're using studio you could just do z plus plus which means it'll just equal or it'll just add one automatically so if we go ahead and run it now As you can see down here, we only got the apples, I think, nine times. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine times, right. So we only get this apple message nine times because what it's doing is it, it's saying, all right, Z starts at one. If Z is less than 10, do this and then add one to Z. So now Z equals two. Is Z, is, is Z less than 10 still? Yes. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, 10, and then when it hits 10, Z 
is not less than 10. So you're not going to do this, this function again. Which should make sense. So that is a while loop. Personally, I don't use the while loop too much because in the step event, it's already looping through your code so many times that I don't need this as much. And I would rather use a for loop than a while loop, but it's good to know how to work a while loop. So let's go ahead and do a for loop. With a for loop, this creates a local variable, meaning we don't need to create a Z variable to begin with. So all you say is for, and this create this has three parameters, and it's kind of odd how it's set up, but uh, just work with me here. So we're gonna say for loop, and we're gonna create the variable i, which in convention is the variable that you name, and you can name this anything you want. Um, you know, we can name it z again. We'll name it z, and you're gonna start this off by equaling z to zero or whatever you want. So that's the same thing as up above saying z equals zero. We're just creating it inside of the for loop. Then you're gonna put a semicolon to separate this. Now we have the condition. If z is less than 10, another semicolon, and then this is what happens if z is less than 10, then we say z plus plus or something like that. Okay, so then we just put in here show message apples. And if we run this code, we're going to get the message apples 10 times. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And then it's done. And the reason for this is it's literally the same thing as a for loop or a while loop. We're, we're setting z to equal 0. Then we're going to say if z is less than 10. And if it is, then add 1 to z. Literally the same thing as the while loop we were just doing. All right. So that is going to be a quick and easy and efficient way of doing loops and if statements and all that stuff. So in our next tutorial, we're going to be looking at drag and drop actions, transferring that to code and using some of these for loops, if statements, while loops that we've used in uh, that we've uh, created in this tutorial. All right, so leave a like, go and subscribe. Let's go ahead and try for 150 likes this time. And uh, I will see you guys next time.